The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu. Only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank. General election in Ghana are always centralized around the promises made by political parties and it's become a tug of war each year for politicians to make the grandest promises uh, and uh, deflate those of the opponents. So, however, the question of the actual implementation is whispered under the breath with promises of over $10 billion investments in job fund and employment benefits turning Ghana into a medical tourism hub and even moving the capital cities to stimulate growth. Thus, the Independent People's Party make compelling case for transforming Ghana, or these are just some of the lofty promises characterized by Ghanaian election. Tonight, on The Hard Truth, we have Mr. Kofi Percival Apalu, the flag bearer of the IPP, to lay out his roadmap for Ghana so as we can be the judges of this. My name is Nana Akusia Kunidra Santi Samuels and this is The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Kofi Apalu, uh, it's here. He's the flag bearer for IPP. Welcome to The Hard Truth, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for, for coming. Yeah, um, it's a pleasure being here. Right. So let's, let's just go straight to, to this. What is your general impression of the current state uh, of Ghana in terms of economic performance, uh, growth of agriculture and private sector development? What's your take on it? It's very, very difficult at the moment, looking at the economic uh, uh, indicators mm -hmm. for now. Uh, everybody's complaining about money in their pocket. Our young men and women who are coming out from universities and polytechnics are not getting jobs. And uh, those in their own business, small business owners, are also complaining that people are not buying their goods and services. And uh, they also find it difficult to raise money from our financial institutions because of the cost of borrowing, which is currently about 40% and 39.5%. So uh, it's make running business very difficult in this country. I, I would say the economy is bad and need to be... Uh, stimulated. Hmm. So that's what IPP we are proposing. I, I ask this because in your 20th day manifesto, sir, you said an IPP government uh, will create 200,000 good uh, youth jobs uh, each year for the next three years by investing uh, in about 300 million Ghana cities in the youth employment. I'm asking, sir, what will such a youth employment strategy entail and how effective will it be in reducing unemployment? I mean, getting all the future uh, generation or maybe the future leaders of this country walking on the street, we are losing human resources. So I believe that we need to retrain some of them. We need to engage some of them into uh, starting their own businesses by financing them, giving them capital to start their own business. So isn't 300 million uh, uh, Ghana cities uh, for the next three, isn't that too much money? Uh, where are you going to get that money from, sir? A country like Ghana is no money, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, even if you look into our manifesto very well, we are saying that we are going to set up a $10 billion job fund. So 20 million cities is not a big money. And raising those money is very simple. Now how would you do that? Oh yeah, you know, it, it can come in the form of uh, borrowing. It can come in the form of raising our own Aren't we borrowing a lot? I mean, are you going to add to the taxes? You know, we all complain about EU taxes now. And if you want to go borrow, we are thinking of or looking for a government who says, no borrowing, we're just going to create some avenues to create more jobs for the people. So 300 million in your case is no money, but to us, a $10 billion uh, dollar project, isn't that huge money? Yeah, uh, those who are complaining Learning that uh, we are we borrowed uh, too much, I would say they are lazy people, you know, or maybe they are not uh, thinking big, because a company like Microsoft, if you look onto their balance sheet, they borrow over 150 billion dollars. Apple, 169 billion dollars. But they use uh, the money to, to to use so you can see visible projects. Oh this yeah, is, if yeah. a company, a company, can borrow 150 billion dollars, and a country like Ghana we cannot borrow $100 billion, then we have to uh, close this country because 
what are we doing? If you borrow $10 billion and you give it to our young men and women to start their own businesses, it's not going to be free money. They are going to use the money to run their business and then pay back. Are you okay? Even with interest, it's not going to be free money. What, what consideration did you take before voicing out and saying, I want to go independent as a president? I mean, how do you arrive at this decision? Oh, actually, I'm not going as an independent candidate. It's a political party. Right. But the name is Independent People's, People's Party. party. And uh, I will win these elections. Everything, you have to be motivated by the Holy Spirit to do certain things. Other than that, you cannot do anything, you know. Uh, it's not about money. It's not about what you think you can do. It's about what God can use you to, to accomplish. Do. Yeah. Mm. So I believe that I will win this election, and uh, I know I will win this election, and nobody can stop that. Your plan to introduce uh, unemployment benefits uh, to ease the pains of Ghanaians with about, I mean, within the ages of 18 years to, say, 25 years, and you're expecting to, to spend about 1,200 um, 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 Ghana cities. In, in a year for one person are you expecting 400 or you are expecting 4 million Ghana cities vulnerable uh, unemployment uh, to benefit from this uh, scheme <laughs> sir I'm asking because these are huge monies and also doesn't mean that at least 4.8 billion uh, will go into the scheme and how are you able to sustain this sir you see it's not that alone we are looking to also introduce child benefits payment. We want every child below 18 years to start receiving 600 Ghana cities every year. Now, uh, based on our estimation, we are looking to uh, pump in well, what's 6 your, what's, your, what's the motivation behind yeah. giving uh, 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 people under the age of 18? Or yeah, because we want to create jobs. We want to create jobs. We want to create wealth. So our plan is that in the first six months, of taking over, we will make sure we allocate social security numbers to every individual in the country, and then every house will, will have a residential address, and then the two will be linked together to help create what we call credit economy. Because when we, we, we know people, where they live, uh, who they are, you can easily lend money to them. Even the so-called advanced economies. They pay unemployment benefit, they pay child benefit. Because how do you expect a child who is three year old to work? A three year old cannot work, a four year old cannot work. So don't they have parents to look after yeah, them? Yeah, but they are t future taxpayers. They are going to be like us and they'll be paying taxes to support the economy. So whilst they are young, a serious government will take care of them. We are poor in Africa because we don't stimulate our economy, we don't take care of our citizens. So if you want to, uh, create wealth. These are some of the strategies that you have to adapt. This will help us to know everybody who lives here. And then it will also check uh, even uh, corruption. Because when you allocate your security numbers to everybody to serve as de facto ID, and then you compare people who are 18 years and above to file their taxes at the end of every year. Now, you'll be able to know because people are going to declare their assets and liabilities. And then if there's a jump in somebody's asset, you'll be able to know where you got those jumps from. I'm guessing you're going to borrow the money still. This money is going to be... Oh, paid. no. This money will come from taxes and social security because already we pay social security. And social security, have you considered the name here? They call it SNET. Ghana, they call it SNET. Mm. Social Security and National Insurance Trust. It means all your social needs are secure. And then at the same time, you're also having some insurance trust. Now, the question is, are our, our social needs secure? No. Are we getting any uh, pre, uh, compensation when we pay insurance? We are not getting. So now you are working, you are contributing social security. Now, let me ask the question. If you lose your job today, will the SNET give you money? Are they not stealing you? Are they not stealing from you? Are they not cheating you? So we need to change the way we've been doing things in this country, because I'm contributing to an insurance scheme. And if, if I lose my job, I need to be compensated till I find another job. But that's not the case in Ghana. So IPP, we are saying that, no, we've been cheating the workers for quite too long. So now let's get back to the basics. Let's redo uh, what we've been doing. Because here we call it pension, state pension. Now, if it's pension, then we should change the name to pension. Then we know that it's pension. And pension is not compulsory. But this one is compulsory. So if it's a comp if it's compulsory item, then it means there's a tax element. 
So that tax element should go to stimulate the economy, should go back to, the, to those who contributed by giving it to people so that they buy goods and services, businesses will be doing well, they'll be employing new people, and then more jobs are going to be created. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. Ecobank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back. You're still watching The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank, Flag Bearer, IPP, Independence People's Party, Kofi Akpalo, it's my guest. Sir, you have stated again in your manifesto that the IPP, your party, will embark on a costing and modeling exercise aimed at cutting the public uh, sector wage bill and reducing over bloated government uh, to about 19 ministries. Does this mean that if voted into power, you will embark on a retrenchment exercise of public sector workers? Oh, not necessarily that. Mm. Not necessarily that. But we don't need uh, too many ministries like we have. Currently, we have about 24, 23 ministries. No, it's too much. Mm -hmm. 19 will, will do the game. So uh, we believe that we have to. Uh, cut down. But by, by implementing, say, your plan for jobs and wealth creation, the IPP again wants to achieve an economic growth of 8%, percent. yes, if elected into office. How soon do you think that you can achieve and maintain or improve the growth uh, rate? Oh, yeah, the, the moment we, we, we get a power, we're going to start working. We're not going to waste time, we're going to work and we'll make sure by the end of 2017 we see a fantastic growth and we are going to sustain that growth because. There are young men and women out there who want something to do. Not that they are lazy people, but nobody is minding them. A lot of people have fantastic ideas sitting in their head, and they need help. So I'm happy your sponsor is uh, Ecobank. So we, we are believing that we can collaborate with them so that they give loans to people, and we guarantee the loans. Are you okay? As government, we have to guarantee loans. So they'll give loans to our young men and women coming from universities, then we guarantee the loans. So in case anything goes wrong, then the government will pay. You understand? The government will pay. Oh, yes. So if I do that, to take risk. That's, that's fantastic. So I go to Ecobank Ghana and say, Ecobank, I need oh, yeah. $1 billion for, oh, yes. for my project. Yes. So and I, so I default payment. Oh, yes. And I come to my guarantor and say, oh, yes. guys, oh. please pay. They will. Vote IPP for your businesses to boom. That's no, a brilliant no, no, idea. No, 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 the Only it will work. No, no, the thing is that as a country, you, you know, we have to help our people. Chinese people are here. They are running businesses. They, they've gotten money from their government. They've entered Ghana. They are making money. Are you okay? So what is stopping us from also helping our people to also do well? I'm, I'm, I, I'm sitting uh, in for uh, the 25 million or 24 or whatever million people, 25 million in Ghana. Now, so, uh, you, you've said a lot of very nice things. I'm, I'm asking... Is this guy or is Kofi really serious? I mean, not in, in court. I mean, yeah. can he achieve this? Don't we hear all these sweet words and at the end of the day, the government comes to power and then it's a different ballgame. How should we trust that you here, seeing all these beautiful things in our ears, will actually achieve what you're talking about? You see, everything that we have mentioned in our manifesto is achievable and we'll be able to do it. Don't look at me as, oh, this guy is not from MPP. We don't know this guy. We've not heard about this guy. It doesn't matter. From where I've been. Where have you been? Uh, I've worked in the UK. I've worked in the Republic of Ireland. As what? what? What did you do there? Yeah, I'm an accountant. Uh, I, I work with uh, 
Northern Trust Investor Services. Northern Trust Investor Services. I worked with them before, before I started my own accounting firm in the UK. Now, how did it do? The accounting firm did it do well? Did it? Oh yeah, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's still in place. Okay, it's still, in place. It's still going. How on. many workers do you have? Oh, I have only four uh, employees. Four employees. Only four employees. Yeah. So mm -hmm. four to twenty-five million. Can you can you manage that? Uh, it's it's not the number of people that you that matters. Really? It's about the vision. It's about the vision because you're not going to do it alone. You have to uh, delegate certain things to people, and if you put in the right people to do the work, not just uh, cronies. If you put qualified personnel, they will do it. And then you are, if you are also ready to uh, fire people at any point in time when uh, they are not performing, you understand? So uh, it's going to be based on performance. Do, do, you, do you think, from, from what you're saying, do you think that some people are in power or are placed in certain positions and not performing? I mean, yeah. Do you have that notion? M most places. Most places. Like which places? Most places. Uh, even if, 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 I, if I, will, I will say something, I'll t even talk about the electricity company of Ghana. That's, they are ineffective. Yeah, because that's the only company in this world that has no competitor, but it's run at a loss. And how can a company without a competitor run at a loss? I don't get it. STC. STC. State Transport Company. But they have, a, they have a lot of competitors now. There's VIP and the others. Oh, yeah. But VIP. Really? VIP. Who are the people managing VIP? Are they PhD holders or MBAs or what? No. They are just normal uh, drivers and mates who are there managing it. And they no, are you you talked about independent people. And I'm saying they have competitors now in that context. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also saying something. Mm. The reason why I brought in uh, STC. STC, they have all the infrastructure, they have uh, so-called MBAs, Master of Business Administration, whatever, all the uh, degrees you can think of. But you're underperforming. Mm. So you change all of them, you bring new oh, uh, you have to put people there. People with entrepreneurship, uh, Akumi, you know, people of business Akumi. You have to put them there. Don't just put anybody because the person who had a degree. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth with Akosia Kunedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. At Ecobank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking, with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Welcome back. You're still watching The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank, Kofi Akpalu, IPP. Uh, presidential candidate is my guest. So, you also intend to create uh, president Youth Advisory Council consisting of young uh, Ghanaians aged between 16 to 25 to provide a non-partisan advice to the president on issues facing the country. What impact do you reckon such a council will, will have on national de uh, development? The youth are our future. We cannot do anything without them. So we have neglected them, relegated them to the back. No, IPP we say no, we let's bring them in. Let's engage them. Let's take something from them. Because some of them, they are brilliant. They have fantastic ideas. So if you're able to bring them, they'll be able to advise. But so what experience do uh, these age uh, groups or brackets uh, come on board to advise the, yeah, the they, president? Uh, you see, those, you don't need to be 100 years before you can have ideas in your, in your head. You can be six years, it can be 13 years, and God can drop something in you. 
and then you can see things differently from the way the elderly will see. So we want to give our young people the opportunity to be part and parcel of this. So they will come, they will advise us in many ways that bothering them, especially the young men. Is it things bothering them or things concerning national development? Okay, uh, some, but anything bothering them concerns Ghana, concerns national development. So for planning purposes, let's in, engage these young men. Let them give us what they think we should do and then we look into it and then we move the country. Mr. Akpalu, uh, the current uh, debate on whether uh, a three-year uh, or four-year SHS policy is best for education system has yet to die down. Um, however, your party, IPP, intends to bring a new educational policy uh, that will match the current uh, junior high, senior high school's educational system into a six-year program to remove unnecessary uh, school dropout. Are you therefore uh, saying that you will draw Ghana from the West African uh, senior certificates as a WASI system? Are you going to do that? Oh, no. No, we can still continue doing what we are doing, but uh, merging the GHS and the SHS. What does that mean to merge? Yeah, means that uh, instead of somebody graduating uh, from GHS, okay, maybe after GHS 3, he's, he or she is not going anywhere. Are you okay? We are saying no. That time the kid will be some, uh, 14, 15, thereabout. So what should uh, he or she stop going to school from there? So we want the kids to at least finish senior high school. Okay, so from JHS3, you move on to, to SH1. Uh, yes, so instead of graduating from there, it, it will be SS1, SS2, SS3, SS4, SS5, SS6. So the same six years. Are you okay? So we don't want any dropout because, you know, a lot of people... Yeah, before you go to the university? Before you go to the university. Because, you see, there are a lot of kids who are dropping here. When they get to, uh, after BC, some of them will not be able to pass. So they are not able to go further. Are you okay? Some, because of monetary uh, issues, they are not able to go further. So they think, oh, BEC, after BEC, it's okay. They have to go and stay home. You know, it's like not happening. But this even you, re you realize that even the four years is a problem for, for most schools in Ghana. So you want to do a six year program. Yeah. So right after uh, JHS, one, two, no, three, no. four, five, That's six. That's after class six. Mm. After class six, you go to SS1, SS2. So you don't go to JHS? SS3. No, we are combining, we are merging them. Are you okay? So it's going to be six years straight. It's not going to, you know, we have three, three. Yes. We are saying instead of having three, three, Let's put them together. And it will be called SS, whatever. senior high. College or whatever. Mm. It can be called college, senior high school. With what infrastructure? Because we don't have the infrastructure oh, in place. We, at the moment, we have JHS. Up to JHS, they're not JSS3. So just add JSS4, JSS5, JSS6. Mm. We have additional classrooms. And then you put in, uh, even it's going to create more jobs because we have, we're going to have more kids in school. So more teachers will be needed. What would you intend to do in the event that you face extreme uh, uh, opposition from the stakeholders in the implementation of your plan? No, we, we, we have to, it's an idea you have to sell to them. You have to sell the benefit to them. And if they think straight, they will understand that, oh, yeah, this is a good thing. Because uh, what are we looking to do? We want the best for our kids. We want the best for our young men and women. And you think and this then, is the only route for a uh, reduced unemployment or dropouts? Oh, it's, it, uh, no, you see, it's... Uh, I, I, I mean, it hurts me because nowhere in advanced economy will you see a uh, 14 year old finishing school. Because in, in Europe, for instance, let's Ireland, Ireland where my kids go to school, it's from class six, they go to college and then they spend six years. Even uh, when you get to fourth year, are you okay? You can opt out and go to look for something to do. Are you okay? So, why and then come why back. are your kids in Ireland and not schooling here? You don't believe in our school system? Uh, no, no, no that. It's a choice. It's a choice. You can choose to send you because we are living in a global economy. I see. Yeah, you can, you can take your kids to anywhere you want to, your kids to go. Because it's not government who's paying for my kids to go to school abroad. You are paying for them. Yeah, I get so that. But over the next decade, uh, an IPP government intends to um, invest over 20 billion US dollars in energy infrastructure. And this is expected to grow in energy supply. Let me ask, which areas in the energy sector will you and your party invest this amount to enable uh, the challenges to 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 even take. Oh, okay. We we look into electricity, looking into electricity. We're looking into solar. 
we are looking into uh, nuclear energy. We are we are looking into even adding more uh, like uh, uh, crude powered uh, generators. So, because we believe that uh, without energy, it will be difficult for businesses to thrive. So, in the short possible term, how soon can you solve the uh, the power situation of Ghana to, to make sure that Ghanaians have a stable power supply oh, yeah. at just, a reasonable cost? Oh, yeah. In, in, in the short term, just uh, uh, privatize the elect electricity company, bring in new distributors. Mm. In the short term, even this one shouldn't take you to uh, two, four, four, four months to do it. Just do it. Straight one touch. Away. Three, Excellent. four months. Bring, bring in more competitors. Mm. If you want to bring in more competitors, they will make sure they'll supply and they'll collect their money. And then they'll go and pay the generators, those who are generating electricity. They'll go and pay them. Because VRA is suffering simply because the ECG is underperforming. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. A lot of people are consuming power in this country. They are not paying. Because ECG, even their workers, some of them connive with the consumers. And then they steal power. Are you okay? But if it's in the private hands, I don't think those nonsense will continue. I, I, I mean, our time is up, but let me just ask you this very final question. Yeah. Another key feature of your manifesto is to move the capital city from Accra uh, and build a new one from scratch between uh, Brangahafu and the northern region. What are the funding and logistical projections for such a project? And if your plan for Ghana is a holistic and even developmental one, why would there be a need sir, for a relocation uh, of the capital? Yeah, uh, relocation, the need, the, the reason why we need a new capital is simple because me and you know Accra is, con is congested now and we have to... You said you build it from oh, yes, scratch. Right. So Accra is congested, you know, and then also for security reasons, we need to make sure we put our capital uh, in a place that will be uh, safe from external aggression. And also we need to create jobs because building a new city will create a lot of jobs. A lot of jobs because construction jobs will be springing up. People like you will be needed up there, and some will be placing you here. So uh, it's going to be a new city, <laughs> and uh, a new city means that we're going to have new hotels, new administration blocks, a whole lot, everything new. And then it's going to be a planned city, very planned city, a new airport, Are you okay, new sports stadiums. All these things will be residential. Uh, uh, homes and stuff like mm. that. So, so that, uh, it's, it's, going, it's going to be massive. You're going to create jobs. Now, let me tell you, if you go to Cairo, yeah, Egypt. 56, not, I would say Egypt, when mm. you go to Egypt, 56 kilometers away from Cairo, mm. they are building a new city. It's going to inhabit 7 million people. You know the number of hospitals they want to build in? How many? 630 new hospitals they're going to build there. You want to do the same here? I wish. I wish we do better than that. Mr. Apali, you, you've said a lot of things. Three reasons why Ghana should vote for you. Number one? Number one is that they are fed up with MPP and NDC. Mm. Number two, they need jobs. Mm -hmm. Number three, they need monies in their pocket. Final question, sir. I'm curious. Who is going to be your, uh, your running mate? Oh, we are going to showcase her very soon. Oh, is that she? Oh, yeah. What's her name? Can we have a name here on the show? Oh, no. We're going to showcase her, so uh, wait for that day. No clues. Where does oh. she work? Where does she come from? Who is she? Just, just yeah, a, because we want to surprise everyone. Just a first name we do. Oh, it's a hard truth, sir. We need a name. No, I'll, 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 I'll tell you the name when. Now? Yeah, when we are ready. When we are ready to showcase. Thank you, sir, for yeah. talking to the hard <laughs> truth. Coffee Apalu IPP presidential candidate, and uh, if you want money in your pocket, and if you are fed up with NDC and PP, the party to go with is uh, the IPP. Uh, party. My name is Nana Akusia Kunidua Santi Samuels, and uh, this being the hard truth, and we are proudly brought to you by Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. Have a good evening. Bye. Sia Kunedu, only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank.